I'm Brian with Kalo Services and HVAC School. And I'm Eric with Kalo Services and HVAC School. And today we're going to be talking through oil filters. Uh, this is for large refrigeration and air conditioning applications. Typically this is going to be seen most in rack refrigeration, grocery refrigeration. Um, but we want to show some of the differences between the Westermeyer model and another common model that's used out in the field and just kind of show some of the features and benefits of each today. So what are some of the first things that stick out to you when you first uh, started uh, working on this model, Eric? Well, one thing that, that was pretty different about this than the Sporlin is the connections aren't in the top flange. They're actually on the body of the housing. So this would be your connection points on the Sporlin unit, and these are your connection points on the Westermeyer unit. I guess the biggest difference being that in this model, you're removing the shell and the top is staying stationary. And in the Westermeyer model, the top is being removed and the shell is staying stationary, which is a pretty big difference in how you would actually work with and service it. Another thing that I noticed right off the bat is that on this model, you actually have separate nuts that you have to manage. Um, so sort of a two-handed operation in order to get the oil filter in and out versus the Westermeyer where the flange itself is actually threaded. It's gonna be a lot easier to put together because remember we're, we're pulling the base off of this. So you're holding this, and then you have to drop one of these through and get it started. So you're gonna to have to like use a finger here and then do this number to get, to get a couple bolts started to be able to put the rest in, right. which is not insurmountable, but it is annoying. Also on this, these have the option for either rotor lock connections uh, or sweat connections. Uh, whereas with this one here, what, what type of connections are these? Do you know? It's just regular pipe threads. You would put a threaded adapter there probably to go to flare. Probably to flare, yeah. Usually they're flare. I mean, you could thread and then sweat um, really whatever you wanted to do, but you also have to, you know, get those fittings and and, and Whereas in this case, if you wanted to do sweat, you could sweat, the body stays stationary, or you could use Rotolock. For those of you who aren't familiar with Rotolock, Rotolock actually uses a O-ring in there. It's generally, I think, Teflon O-ring, is that yeah. right? Yeah, so generally a Teflon O-ring. And so they are a more consistent seal. As you know, uh, flares do tend to be leak points uh, in the field. And so this isn't necessarily uh, dictating that you have to use flare, but that would be the most common type of connection that people would use in that application. Another nice thing with this stand is that you can easily mount these on either a vertical or horizontal application super easily without having to field configure. Let's go ahead and show that. How hard is that to do? You just pull this uh, pin here and take that out and you can rotate it horizontally. Put the pin back in. There it goes on. It's going to go up a little bit. So that's our horizontal application, and then all we have to do to put it back vertical. So now let's just show the assembly and disassembly of this model versus um, the other model. So there's a little, uh, a little area for you to easily hook onto on the filter um, for you to pull it out. And that's the, that's the assembly, I mean, that's the disassembly. So let's go ahead and reassemble. This bolt here is a little bit longer. Now, again, in real life, when you're doing this, you're going to want to follow the specific torque specs and you're going to want to follow a pattern, an uneven pattern rather than going off on one side or the other. But as you can see, this allows for one hand operation. So this shows the key difference here. With In this case, the flange or the top is staying in place and then we're removing the entire shell. So to demonstrate it properly, we could mount it here and then show us pulling the top off, but that's not how it would work in real life because you would have your tube being attached here. And so instead, we're gonna just kind of show it free and we'll disconnect it and show how this comes apart. You'll also notice that in this case, we have our port on the bottom side where on this one, we have it on top. So you can see we have a separate nut and bolt. This would be clamped until you're ready. So that's what most guys do is leave the clamp on. But still, the assembly 
is kind of tricky. So then this clamp would typically be holding the shell and you could remove it last if you wanted to. All right. And then you kind of drop it down and slide it over. And then here is our filter. In this case with the Sporlin, you can see that the filter has to fit onto this top portion because this is the part that's staying stationary. And then the entire shell is moving off of the filter. Just based on my assessment, there are some kind of key differences. Um, most of them I would uh, see as advantages with the Westermeyer oil filter. But again, the most important thing is if you're working on systems that have oil filtration, you need to make sure that you're actively managing the oil system, that you're actively changing your oil filters, um, because again, lubrication is absolutely huge on these systems. And it's, it's one of the biggest things uh, that can cause problems. If you are allowing the oil to get contaminated, now you're going to have um, significant compressor problems down the line, uh, which can really cascade through the entire system because in these managed oil systems, you have one oil supply that's being fed through multiple compressors. So one problem can cause a lot of issues. Uh, having an oil filter that's easy to maintain and that's installed properly is going to be absolutely huge. I'm Brian Orr. And I'm Eric Melly. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.